Good evening, everyone. Joe for jazpyscasebreaks.com. I was doing a checklist of making sure I have everything. Sticky pad, I don't have that. Got it. Post-it notes, check. I'm ready for this break now. All right, now I'm ready. Um, 2018 Topps Chrome Baseball 12 box pick your team number one from jazpyscasebreaks.com big thanks to all of these folks for getting into the action on a Tuesday the 22nd it's already the 22nd remember these teams don't have hits so we took them out Dave Barrows winning the Angels spot ran and Patrick K getting the last spot mojo Dodgers and there's everybody else thanks for joining us thanks for breaking with us thanks for making it all happen now, this break is also part of our Super Bowl, I can't say Super Bowl, Superb Owl, the big game promo. Any break that has SB53 in the title, at the end of the break, I'll randomize everybody's names and everyone gets a spot in our latest uh, big game promo, which is uh, the Squares promo that we do every year. It's always a, one of our most popular promos every year, so get into it. It's a fun one. Puts a little extra spice on the big game. The big game. The big football game. You know the you know the one I'm talking about. Anyway, it's a it's a super promo. All right, so what is this What is this again? So that guy, Otani on the front, two chrome autographs per box on average, and a bunch of other stuff, huh? All right. All right, good luck, boys and girls. Now, my assumption is that this break will take about an hour from now. So if you're in this break, sit back and relax. If you're just spectating, sit back and relax. If you need to run a quick errand and you're not in this break, just got about an hour. Go run your errand, come check back in and see what, we're, what else we're breaking. The rest of you can also help us fill up the next break. TJ's hoping uh, to make this a baseball night. He's thinking, let's make it a baseball night. Let's finish off Bowman's best baseball. That'd be fine. Yeah, if you're an adult, get an adult beverage. You know, fix yourself an adult beverage. Crack open an adult beverage. Mix yourself an adult beverage. An old-fashioned, maybe. A Moscow Mule, perhaps. It's a nice hipster drink. Hipsters out there, maybe uh, maybe some some nice scotch on the rocks. Nice cool, nice cold beer. It's fine, those are good too. Maybe a hot toddy. Maybe you're feeling a little under the weather. Throat's a little sore. Get some tea, some lemon, some honey, splash of uh, Irish whiskey. Pretty good. If you are not an adult, maybe some apple juice. Some nice now, if you th if apple juice is a little too sugary, toss some ice in there. Let it melt a little bit. Got a nice refreshing glass of apple juice. Maybe some uh, milk, warm milk. It's good too. Nothing beats a nice, tall, refreshing glass of water. Got some water. Work on that as well. Some Kool-Aid, some Tab, maybe. Anyone into some Tab? RC Cola. Anybody into the RC Cola? Fanta, perhaps. All right. So, rookie cards. Those ship. Vet Commons do not ship. Vet Parallel. Any parallel inserts. They do ship. So that's a refractor that ships, right? So there you go. Everything, you know, variations and inserts like this and blah, blah, blah. Those will, those will all go. That redemption, any guesses on that redemption? 
Ooh. Are you a squirt guy, John? I uh, I enjoyed a squirt. I don't drink a lot of soda, but when I do, it's often a squirt. And I did enjoy a squirt today. There's Nick Williams, purple. Those are the two ninety nine, and a second redemption. We got two redemptions, and a and a third autograph. There's Adrian Sanchez. This is an above average box, ladies and gentlemen. There you go, AP. Nice. That's a that's a good one. I see you. We'll get these top loaded before they get shipped out by our shipping team. Zach Granke. That's a parallel. So TJ saying Francisco. Xavier or Xavier. Saying Ozzy Alvius. Look at this. What a box. We got a JP Crawford. I think these are only one per case. Rookie debut medallion. Sometimes these are numbered too. And that goes to the Fightin' Phils. That'll be for Tom. So there's your rookie debut medallion card right there. All right, so let's see what we got here. Behind Cole Hamels. Nice, John saying your grandma's drink was squirt and vodka. Ooh, squirt and vodka sounds delicious. You are due to receive a rookie autograph orange parallel. Nice, those are to 25 of, a lot of people guessing Otani. Or Trout. No, just one person. R. Shohei does not start with R. Rafa? Rafa Nadal? Rafael Nadal? Rafael Devers. Got tennis on the brain. That goes to the Red Sox. Eric Bailey on the board. You can put it on the board. There you go. There you go. All right. Behind this Buster. Yes. Go. Sorry, Buster Pose. You're gonna have to go upside down. You are due to receive. Congrats. A rookie autograph of. C. Shohei does not start with C, but Chance Cisco does. There it is. T.J. A little bit of sorcery on his part. That goes to Chris Parent and the O's. Nice box. Nice start. Are you still waiting on redemptions for those, TJ? TJ's like, I've got like four of those waiting to redeem. Come on, Chance. Sign your cards. You know what? I thought it was with a C too. <laughs> like the like the technology, like the software company, right? But no, he spells it with an S. Jay saying one of those redemptions was supposed to be a Chris Bryant red out of five. But I can wait. I've got plenty of boxes to go. So. Plenty of boxes to go. See, 
Stephen K, I don't also, I think, was it Stephen K who mentioned Yoohoo? I don't remember the last time I had a Yoohoo. Davij, what's going on? Yeah. Good to have you back. I'm not sure if we're going to have any football coming up soon. I think people are waiting on that new release tomorrow, 1819 Crown Royale Basketball, but we can get in some football today. Pantheon, maybe? Some old Pantheon football? I know that was moving along earlier. Our football mixer? I don't know. Check it out, jazbeescasebreaks.com. If you want to make it a baseball night, folks, we got Bowman's Best Baseball halfway there. Like Bon Jovi. Halfway there. Living on a prayer. We can do that as well. We should do that tonight. Yeah, well, I wonder how many how many uh, Cisco jokes Chance gets. How many thong song jokes he gets. Maybe that's part of his rookie hazing. He has to do the thong song in front of the entire team. All right. CT3 to lead things off, as he usually does. There's our first autograph, Jordan Lutlow for the Pirates. That goes to Karen and the Pittsburgh Pirates. There's auto number one. I don't think that's numbered or anything like that. No, there it is. Has this guy signed yet? I would have heard something, right? And Chris Stratton. Michael Wilmot with the uh, San Francisco Baseball Giants. A little bit of oppo Joe mojo All right, so those are your two autographs. Let's see if we can find some parallels. There's one. There's Rugnet Odor to 99. We'll save that Otani as well. And Andrelton Simmons at a 150 for the Angels. Dave Barrow's got the Angels in a spot random. All right. Next box. Good luck. Um, well, to, on, on this day, Tuesday, January 22nd, 2019, thanks for joining jazbeescasebreaks.com, Mariano Rivera, Roy Halliday, Edgar Martinez, and Mike Mussina are now Hall of Famers. Let's see it. With, um, with Mo getting 100% of the votes. Unanimous. Uh, Edgar Martinez and Roy Halladay got in with 85.4% uh, of the votes. And Musina narrowly made his way into Cooperdown with 76.7% of the selection. Rivera was a lock. This is all according to MLBTradeRumors.com. Rivera was a lock to go into Cooperstown, although most expected that he'd fall shy of the unanimous in Shryman. That won't be the case. The all-time saves leader was too clear of a Hall of Famer for anyone to ignore. So, so in addition to 652 saves and 952 games finished, an ERA plus of 205, he retired with an 82-60 and 60 record, 2.21 ERA, a 1,173-286 to 286 K to walk ratio. That's pretty crazy. And of course, just a dominant monster in the postseason.
Yeah, Ken Griffey Jr. didn't even get 100%. I think he was the highest until Rivera, though. No, yeah, no Don... I I like Don Mattingly. I don't think Don Mattingly is a Hall of Famer, though, Jay. He Don Mattingly, I don't think, had a few great seasons. But not... I think he's just going to fall short. It's just not... Not enough production for, for as long. I forget when Jeter will be eligible. Is it seven years? Ten years? After you... After you retire? Zach Granite Blue Wave, 46 out of 75. Oh, and there's Max Freed. Oh, is it only four years? For some reason, I thought it was longer. Zach Granite goes to Scott V and the Twins. And we have an orange, Josh Donaldson. Nice. 11 out of 25 for the Blue Jays. Uh, that'll be for Rick Barker. There you go, Rick. We got Green Wave, Marcus Stroman, 2 out of 99. And... Tyler Maley is your second autograph, and that's for Michael W. and the Reds. <laughs> Maley, who's most wanted, is his Instagram. Nice. Good job. Good job, Tyler. There you go. There are your two autographs. Next box. Roy Halliday, of course. Um, plane crash. That was back in November of 2017. And his widow, Brandy Halliday, offered the following statement on the behalf of her late husband. Being inducted into the Hall of Fame is every boy's dream. Sit down at that stage in Cooperstown, deliver your acceptance speech in front of baseball's most enthusiastic fans. Something every baseball player aspires to achieve. And Roy was no exception, but that was not Roy's goal. It was not his goal to have those three letters after his signature. His goal is to be successful every night of the day in his 16-year career. Tonight, this announcement is the end result of that effort. Roy, if only Roy were here to personally express his gratitude for his, this honor, what an even more amazing day this would be. I would like to extend a special thanks to baseball writers for the overwhelming percentage of votes that Roy received in his first year on the ballot. It means so much to me, Braden and Ryan. So there you go. It has. November 7th, 2017, over a year. Isn't that crazy? It felt like, I mean, it felt much, felt like much sooner. Uh, MLB TradeRumors.com goes on to say it'd be difficult to argue that Halliday isn't a deserving candidate. Beyond his Cy Youngs and his all-star nods, the right-hander pitched to a 203-105 and 105 record uh, with a career 338 ERA, 2,117 strikeout to 592 walk ratio, 20 shutouts, 67 complete games. And this was at a time when baseball was moving further and further away from allowing pitchers to throw a full nine innings. He was a bit of a throwback in the league, led the league in complete games, seven of his 16 seasons. Baseball reference and fan graphs has him both at over 65 wins above replacement. 
Doesn't have the postseason, though. But, did he really? I, uh, based, MLB. TradeRumors.com saying, I'd be remiss not to mention the masterful no-hitter he pitched against the Reds in his postseason debut back in 2010. Wow. Halliday issued just one walk and otherwise perfect showing, put on a masterful display and further establishing himself as a himself as a big game pitcher. Yeah, Jay. I always wanted that too. I... Yeah, the cynical part of me definitely thinks... What was the death a bit of a was there a little bit of a sympathy vote there? He's got the numbers though, I would say. I guess for a modern era pitcher. You know, I guess in your head you always think Cy Young pitchers gotta win three hundred games, have X amount of strikeouts and all that sort of stuff, but baseball's changed, so you gotta have to look at those more modern pitchers a little bit of a little bit differently. It's hard to compare against like the old school guys, you know, but I would I would imagine that he would have eventually gotten in. Maybe it was just a little bit earlier because of that. Nice Sandy Alcantara. But his resume isn't really that in question, I think. 21 out of 50 for the Marlins. Sandy Alcantara, nice gold wave for Austin. There's David Robertson, Yankees edition to 299. And there's Fernando Romero for the Twins. That'll be for Scott V and the Twinkies. There's our two autographs for this box. And the next box. Now, MLBTradeRumors.com talking about Edgar Martinez. I know TJ was mentioning earlier. And we have talked a bit about Edgar Martinez, and more than a bit. We've always talked about how how he should be a Hall of Famer. According to MLBTradeRumors.com, they write, The 56-year-old Edgar Martinez will be a controversial addition for some onlookers, given that he spent a vast majority of his career as a designated hitter. There is little denying, however, that the Mariners franchise, Mariners franchise icon is one of the best pure hitters Major League Baseball has ever seen. He won two AL batting titles, thrice led the league in on-base percentage, and hit better than 310 separate seasons. In all, Martinez retired slashing 312, 418, 515, with 309 home runs, 514 doubles, a lot of doubles, 15 triples, 2,247 hits, 1,200, pretty much a little over 1,200 runs scored, and a little over... 1250 runs batted in, 1261 to be exact. While his counting stats fall shy of what some consider to be Hall of Fame benchmarks, like 500 home runs, 3,000 hits, Martinez was consistently elite uh, on a rate basis right up until the final season of his career. Some OPS and WRC numbers uh, in there as well for those of you who are curious about that. Edgar Martinez should got should, should get in. I think that was a good pick. 
The pick I'm not sold about, and we'll talk about in the next box, Mike Mussina. Very good pitcher, right? Great pitcher. But is he a is is Mike you see in a Hall of Fame pitcher? React. Next box. Trevor Williams is for Karen, Pittsburgh Pirates. Almost miss Anthony. Anthony, you gotta use the use the canvas, sir. There's Anthony Stantner for the Orioles. Chris Parent with the O's. Absolutely, Leonard. Both of them, I think. But yeah, Ken Griffey Jr. got had the most votes until Mariano Rivera got 100 percent of the votes this time around. There's Chris Davis for Chris Parent as well. 18 out of 50 Gold Wave. Davis right here. Nice. There are two autos from the box. Next box. But yeah, as, T as TJ was mentioning earlier, I think I do enjoy, I do like that Edgar Martinez got in. It's just straight up, not like veterans committees. So. Like Martinez, the 50-year-old, and going moving on with the MLBTradeRumors.com article, like Martinez, the 50-year-old Mike Mussina, perhaps falls shy of some long-considered standard, quote-unquote, Hall of Fame benchmarks, but he was consistently an excellent pitcher in the game, games during the, in the game, during the game's all-time offensive peak. Moose retired with a 270, 153 record, a 368 ERA, 2,813 to 785 strikeout to walk ratio five-time all-star seven gold gloves had six top five Cy Young finishes and a true workhorse for the O's and the Yankees over an 18-year career wow that would include a decade-long peak when he posted a cumulative 129 ERA plus topped 200 innings in nine straight seasons and there you go some may be surprised that Mussina, to be reminded that Mussina never won a World Series. Yeah, actually, I am surprised as well. Uh, as he joined the Yanks for the first time in the season immediately following their 1998-2000 uh, repeat, three-peat, and retired a year before their 09 return to the top of the mountain. <laughs> he just missed both of those? Nevertheless, Mussina was a consistent rotation stalwart who thrived in the midst of a steroid era while spending the entirety of his career pitching in the game's toughest division. Are are we convinced about Mike Mussina? I mean, he, he almost had maybe a few seasons short. Of a 300 win career in a pretty, and he only pitched in the AL East for his entire career. So I mean, that's suppose that's pretty pretty impressive. Maybe maybe in a uh, maybe in a lesser division, you know, he could be a 300 game winner, and that would be that that would be one of the classic sort of Hall of Fame benchmarks for pitchers. 
There's Andrew Stevenson orange to 25. That'll be for Corey K. I don't know. Part of Hall, part of Hall of Fame, I think. It's obviously not a statistical award. There's Curie Maya for the red legs. That goes to Michael Wilmot. It's not a, st a stats award, right? Oh, there's obviously has to be a little bit of intangible involved. I think character certainly plays a part, a little part. And I think some intangible, like, does he feel like a Hall of Famer? You seen it doesn't feel like a Hall of Famer. I've, I suppose if, if he had won a Cy Young or two, or maybe hit that 300 win benchmark, maybe had a kind of a key win in the World Series, then you can kind of overlook some of those stats and be like, all right, you can give them, you can give them Hall of Fame. You know, there's longevity counts as well, right? Like good stats for that for 19 seasons of, of, of baseball. But I suppose he got a little unlucky, right? Joined the team after their three peat and retired a season before they won another one. Um, Marlins auto goes to Austin Caruso. Leonard saying, uh, makes me mad that Pete Rose is in the Hall of Fame, but all of these players who took roids are in the Hall of Fame. There's Anthony Banda. That might be a variation there. Now, a lot of people get the hammer. AP. A lot of people get the hammer. Well, Bonds isn't in the Hall of Fame, Leonard. Roger Clemens isn't in the Hall of Fame. Is uh is Omar Vizquel in the Hall of Fame, Cody West? Steve Stone hoping that store orders are moving now. I see one order. Three orders. From Michael, Jeff, and Aaron. That's it. And unless those people unless those people sold out some breaks, we still have no breaks sold out at the moment. Mark McGuire not in the Hall of Fame. Wait, why isn't Omar? Shouldn't Omar Vizquel be in the Hall of Fame? I feel like he should be. Is he still on the ballot? Oh, did we, Matt? Nice. Thanks for the update. I was just about to check that score too, but you saved me the trouble. Oh, this is only his second year of eligibility? I feel like he'll get in eventually. About halfway through this break, folks. Should be done in about another 30 minutes or so. Good luck to all. And then we'll go through uh, the orders and see, let's see uh, who's been getting what. And we'll go from there. Carlos Correa to 75. 
and Paul Blackburn Rovers. That goes to Mike Smith and the A's. And that'll be for Mike Smith, Smitty, and the Athletics. I've got a question for you guys. Who are some players? Who are some players that are only maybe one or two years in the league? One, one, two, or three years in the league. Who are, uh, what do you think is going to be Hall of Famers? And a 299. Or like maybe some younger stars. Francisco Lindor? There's Austin Meadows. I don't know. Austin Meadows? I know it's like super early to think about it. There's Karen Steele of the Pirates. But no no player, few few times do we look at a player in their first or two, three seasons and say, there you go. That's Hall of Fame. The last time I remember, I mean, Trout, obviously, but last time I remember a player like that was, uh, was like David Wright. David Wright was just like like that. You were just like that guy's gonna be Hall of Famer, right? Until his his back betrayed him, you know. But that was a guy where you thought, all right, from from the get go, that's a potential Hall of Famer right there. There's Austin Meadows, Paul Blackburn, Cody West. Thinking Walker Bueller, that's a possibility. I think it's harder for pitchers these days. But yeah, I mean, if it's just He's got to win a couple Cy Youngs, I think, now. Because you're not going to get the counting stats anymore with so many um, <clears throat> with so many uh, relief pitching, specialized pitching. So they may be they may be held to a standard that's closer to that's more award winnings, so awards or leading in categories and whatnot. But possible. Trey Turner says TJ can hit, has speed. Let's say if, let's say Trey Turner puts in a let's say he puts in like a three thousand hit season or a career. That's a possibility. Andrew Benintendi, Aaron Judge. Yeah, I think I think Aaron Judge's career he's got to he's got to have a lot of homers. But if he if he hits like some magic numbers like 500, 550, 600 home, I mean that'll do it. Rob Thomas saying Blake Snell. I could. That's an interesting choice. Blake Snell maybe knocks out another Cy Young. Maybe takes the Rays to a World Series win. Imagine. That'd get him there. That'd get him very close, that's for sure. Reese Hoskins. Interesting. <laughs> Gilo says Vlad Guerrero Jr. When he when he when he gets when he gets up. Nolan Arenado, that's an interesting one too. I feel like that, I feel like third, uh, third base is tough, right? That position, I feel like there's so many good hitters at that position. But yeah, if Arenado keeps up what he's doing. If he if he hits some uh, some some like landmark numbers, right? Thresholds, I could see that happening. Yachty, first ballot, I could, yes. I'm thinking more younger guys, though. You know, like, you don't know how this guy's career is going to turn out. That guy, Cody West was saying. He's more of a vet. Otani? Maybe? He'd have to stay healthy. And he'd have to play at a high level. Actually, maybe not. He just has to be decent at hitting and decent at pitching at the same time. He might get there. There is Adrian Sanchez. 
for the Nationals. That goes to Corey K. Refractor autograph, 394 out of 499 for Corey K and the Nats. What about what about these what about these guys? Syndergaard, Jacob Degrom. Oh, sometimes these autos are hard to see. Hunter Wood, Tampa Bay Rays. That'll be for Martin. There's Gary Sanchez to 99. Green Wave for the Yankees. That'll be for Robert. Gilo thinks Bueller has a good chance. He's set up for success right now. And like I was saying before, I think it's got to be harder for younger pitchers these days. Because they're not going to get those, like, they're not going to get those numbers, right? They're not going to get those, like, 300 wins. No one's going to win 300 wins. No one's going to get that anymore. No starting pitcher's going to get that. Not in this day. Unless, unless things significantly change in baseball where it cycles back into starting pitching, starting pitchers grinding out seven, eight innings at a, a start, those wins numbers aren't going to be there as much. Maybe strikeout numbers, though. If you're pitching, you know, max effort for a shorter period of time, maybe you're just racking up Ks. But I think for starting pitchers, for young starting pitchers, looking to get into the Hall of Fame like a decade later, like two decades later maybe, you know, I think they've, they've, got, to, they've got to lead the league in multiple categories or something like that for multiple years and add hardware to their cabinets. Cy Youngs, maybe some World Series, World Series MVP, that kind of stuff. I feel like that'll matter a little bit more to voters. I think the numbers will be a little bit harder. I think you can still look at wins above replacement and broad stats like that to kind of help out, but that'll be part of it. If Snell gets onto any decent offensive team, then he's going to be crazy good, says Rob Thomas. I get. I mean, yeah, yes and no. I think pitchers are are unique in the sense that that they can still rack up great numbers independent of wins and losses. I think I think over the last five, ten years, especially for you know, if you start like double wins are not a are not a good metric of how good a pitcher is. You know, you can have you could have a great pitcher have a losing record every year just because he's on a bad offensive team. So you can't measure a pitcher based on W's. But but Snell, even on his own, you know, can be can still rack up the numbers. Raising a new stadium. That's what it is. Get him, get him out of that ballpark. Get him in a new stadium, and I think, I think things will, things should improve. There's Zach Granite for the Twins. Refractor autograph for Scott. One eighty three out of four ninety nine. Ooh, 
Otani, Luke Weaver, Future Stars. And there's Miguel Gomez for the Giants. That'll be for Michael Wilmot. There's Chris Davis to two ninety nine. We got our two autos right here. Three boxes to go, boys and girls. Bowman's best, ladies and gentlemen. Jaspiescasebreaks.com. Check it out if you want to do a little more baseball tonight. Do, 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 do. All right, two, four, six more autographs to go. Good luck, everybody. So it looks like, uh, what's going on? Nothing going on in baseball, boys and girls. Every day goes by. We're marching closer and closer to pitchers and catchers reporting. Closer and closer to the entire squad reporting. And yet the big boys, Bryce Harper and Manny Machado, not signed. I guess here's the big news. You ready? Breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. Rangers to sign as Drupal Cabrera. Woo. Man, what a move. Wow. Braves re-sign Nick Marquez. Stop, stop the presses. Tigers sign Gordon Beckham. Dang. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Wait for it. Game-changing move, ladies and gentlemen. I missed this bit of news. Athletics claim Parker Bridwell. Are you kidding me? Rangers signed Zach McAllister? What? No way. What an AL West game changer that is. And the Angels signed Cody Allen, which I think is actually a pretty good move. Hmm. So, I think the Sonny Gray deal is is uh, is official, I think. I think, I think they're just working at um, contract extension numbers, but I'm pretty sure it's like 95% a done deal. They just haven't done the jersey unveiling. That's a pretty good move for the Reds, I think. Which is interesting. I think the are the Reds I think the Reds are trying to compete this year. I thought they were just going to kind of sit back until their younger guys start coming up the ranks in the next 2-3 years. But no, it looks like they're trying to build a bridge from then until until then and keep butts in seats, which I think is a good idea. I think they're, they can surprise a lot of teams, I think. So, yeah. What, so, what was Romo and Harper? Are we talking about Sergio Romo? Tony Romo? Oh, there you go. Jay, Jared is saying, I'm happy... That the San Antonio Missions are now a triple A team for the Brew Crew. Going to watch some good baseball for cheap. Yeah, Brewers have a good, good farm system. Ah, Tony Romo. And Harper was talking about Tony Romo's play, calling Romo said he was gonna he was going to Texas. There's Garrett Cooper, Coop going to the Marlins for Austin. Cooper Loop, Twitter handle, IG handle. There's Parker Bridwell right there. Claimed by the A's. And Giovanni Gallegos for Robert Aguilar and the Bronx Bombers. Oh, 
And Nomar Mazzara, green wave right there to 99. All right, what other stories do we have here? Diamondback signed Wilmer Flores. Dodgers have discussed Jock Peterson with multiple clubs. Let's see what uh, what news is there. So on January 20th, a couple days ago, Dodgers are discussing Jock Peterson and potential deals, and the White Sox are among the teams they're talking to, so according to Ken Rosenthal of The Athletic. Trading Peterson, speculatively speaking, trading Peterson could further open up room for L.A. free agent center fielder A.J. Pollock, who the team is pursuing. Interesting. Yesterday, on the 21st, apparently the Braves have also, quote, checked in on a trade involving Peterson, tweets John Heyman, a fan cred. Still not clear how many teams have been in contact with L.A., nor is it clear that there's any momentum at all surrounding a Jock Peterson deal. However, the connection with Atlanta is only logical. The Braves have an obvious corner outfielder vacancy at the moment. And the Braves general manager, Alex Anthopoulos, yes, I remember that guy, spent the 16-17 season as a dot. Why can't I open this pack? There you go. As the Dodgers uh, vice VP of baseball operations. Interesting. I don't, know the, I don't know what the Dodgers are doing, to be honest with you. They've got, they've got the cap space. They've got, they can stay under the luxury tax. Or maybe even go a little bit over it since they've... Since they kind of reset that luxury tax last season. Um, but it doesn't look like they're going to be spending the, the... Splashing the cash on a guy like Machado or Bryce Harper as everyone thought they'd be. Now... I don't think they're in any rush because I think it seems as if the market is kind of not forcing them to make an offer, right? But I think they'll be in play. But I think I don't think they want to be the leaders of the pack in that regard. Which I guess is a smart move, but, you know, we're fans. We get impatient. And there is Tyler Wade for the Yankees. Wonka Vader saying, I love watching baseball live versus TV. Not really a fan, but want to go to some T Tacoma Rainiers games this season. There are no, there are no other Tyler Wades out there in the world? I, know, I grew I grew up watching a lot of baseball, so TV and and live here in LA. So one of my favorite sports. Bill Mosher in the house says I'm a Red Sox fan, but I'm really interested in a different Red team, the Reds. Why? Tell me more, Bill Mosher. Out of 150, Victor Robles for the Nats, and there's Dylan Peters. Nice. Rookie auto for the Marlins. That goes to Austin. Yeah, Tyler. Was Tyler Wade a first adopter? There were no other Tyler Wades? Did the other Tyler Wade be like, oh, Tyler Wade underscore O2? Damn it. I think um, Yasiel Puig on the Twins, I think he's going to rake in that ballpark. For you fantasy baseball fans, 
I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe a lot of fantasy guys will be on this already. There's Tyler Wade again. Out of 50, although he didn't get it fast enough for Instagram. Or for uh, for Twitter, that is. I think I think Yasiel Puig is going to rake in that ballpark. So for those of you looking for a slightly sleeper-ish pick, unless everybody in fantasy baseball is all over it. That'd be a, that'd be a player that I'm trying to target. All right, last two autographs coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Kind of plateaued after that first box, huh? Good luck, everyone. Bowman's Best is in the store, folks. I know, it backed by popular demand. People were demanding it, so we got it. Don't make us regret that. No, it should sell out soon. That's a good one. Get into it, baseball fans. Oh, can't forget about this. The first winner of our uh, of our Super Bowl promo, or I can't say big game promo. What's up, Dennis? Uh, no one's here, just me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. I'll be back. All right. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Mini Meager, what's going on? Liam, new to Jazz Feast. What's what breaks next? Nothing. Nothing sold out at the moment. So I don't know what's going to be next. All right, Bill. Bill Mosher saying he thinks the Puig pickup is going to be big for them. And Sonny Gray is going to be rejuvenated in Cincy. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with Sonny Gray. I think he was hot in Oakland, had some injury issues, right? And then got sent off to New York, which he never ever seemed comfortable there. And then now he's in Cincinnati. And now that he's got an extension going and all that, so maybe he's he's going to settle in a little bit more nicely there. Where's Sonny Gray originally from? I think Yasiel Puig is also going to be solid because he has has former Dodger hitting coach and one of his favorite coaches, Turner Ward, is on the Reds now. So that could that could be interesting too. That's also good for Puig. There's Kiri Maya, speaking of the Reds. That'll go to Michael Wilmot and the Red Legs. To Moro Tani. And there's our last, second and last autograph. Second autograph of the box. Last autograph of the break. Rookie Auto on card. Tiago Vieira, Michael Wilmot for the White Sox. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's see if we have any parallels, some low-numbered parallels to close things out. There's Sean Doolittle to 99. All right, well, it looks like that is that. Thanks, everybody. Nice 2018 Topps Chrome Baseball break. If you want more baseball, we got it in the store, jazbeescasebreaks.com, Bowen's Best baseball is in there so that should be a lot of fun all right now let's see who wins our first big game promo square let's get all these names here put them into this blank list we'll close. you don't want to get rid of those too so your odds are a little bit better um three and a five eight times for the list one two three Four, five, six, seven, and seven, and eighth and final time. Name on top after eight times is Christopher. I don't. I don't think I called your name all break, Chris, but you are the first one. 
in our um, big game promo. Details on jazpiescasebreaks.com. Ladies and gentlemen, any break that has SB53 in the title will be eligible for those squares. So check out the details on the website, jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.